rather show itself in the relation of someone to the world as a whole, and not in one's belief or propositions. And so it seems necessary, necessary to transcend not only A, non-A, but also A and not, not, not A and non-A and non, non, not A. The world's mystics, for example, Plotinus, Meister Eckhart, or Nicholas de Cusa, the Christian side, agree that God is beyond existence and non-existence. Let's call this position a position of mystical ineffability. But even this stage is not the final resting point of some discursive, argumentative of spiritual journey. In fact, there are no final resting points. What really matters here is whether the discussion points toward the unspeakable, only transcendence where all our conception of the world and God are, are merely some initial steps in the overall moment and not something determined, determined, fixed, stationary. Thank you. And uh, stay on this level at the end. Uh, if, uh, if information is, as Professor Lehmann says, something should be uh, non-material, as could be under the uh, material reductionism, uh, it's the shortest is the shortest uh, let's say definition of Christian faith existential communication and uh, we are uh, on the way uh, to the also to the last question of social relevance of, of religion because we are there in the field of praxis and uh, uh, in uh, Christianity becoming an uh, actual individual, it means to gain Christ like, to commitment, uh, a, 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 a commitment to, to the praxis, uh, which means uh, this commitment is uh, becoming an earnest agent of inward, inward personal transformation. At the same time, of critical, social, and de deliberative change toward justice and freedom of the spirit. Uh, so I'm asking also uh, you if you can express s maybe something more concretely and fully about, uh, uh, let's say, relation between suffering and eternal happiness, which is probably very important for. Uh, Christian attitude. Well, this thing is going to say it. These are major issues, ladies and gentlemen, aren't they? Let me just say something brief. This is a very personal question, of course, and uh, uh, it's been addressed to me as a Christian. And so I apologize in advance, but there's no other way of doing it but to give you a personal answer. Because it is very much at the personal level. I have friends who spent quite a bit of time in London working among socially deprived young people where alcohol abuse, sex abuse, drug abuse was absolutely right. They went there as Christians and befriended the young people and affected such a transformation in their local society that the Prime Minister of our country heard about it and called them in to explain to the ministers of our government what is this that's happening. The very interesting thing is that the report was suppressed. It was not permitted to say that Christianity was the cause of it. And I said to my colleagues here that science is only one part of my life. I am a person. And that's where the notion of God as a person comes into its full meaning for me. I believe that human beings are made in the image of God, which means that we are infinitely special, we have infinite value. And I would not use the term yawning gap that John Paul Kinghorn uses, but I do think it is possible for a person who is a creature of God to become a child of God.
and to receive the very life of God, and that has a transformative effect. And I can only speak from my experience here. I've seen so many lives transformed, broken marriages repaired, alcohol turned into food, and so on. And very personally, I've been married for 45 years, and the thing that has kept our marriage together has been that we have, each of us, a personal and very deep relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now that raises such big personal issues. You mentioned suffering and happiness. We're all searching for happiness. Atheism tells us that this life is all there is. Christianity tells me that Jesus died and rose again. This life is not all that there is. And I cannot begin to explain to you why it is that I believe that he is God incarnate. But if you ask at the praxis level, I would just simply say, let's meet in a year. And um, I bring 50 people with me whose lives have been utterly transformed by their personal relationship with Christ. You bring 50 people whose lives have been utterly transformed, say, by atheism or whatever. And we compare, it would be an interesting experiment to do. But my practical answer to you is the more I spent my entire life exposing my faith to its opposite, one of the reasons I learned Russian, so that I could go and expose my belief in a context where systematic atheism had been imposed on people. And it's a personal conclusion, of course it is, but the crowning evidence to me that Christianity is true is not the fine tuning of it's not the argument from the semiotics of DNA. It's the argument from the reality of God experience over 60 years now in my personal life and the transformation and the meaning and the peace and the joy and the happiness. Those are big words, aren't they? Aren't they? That have been brought into my family and in my experience through belief in God. And frankly, through belief in Christ, I don't find that in the same measure anywhere else. That's my own personal Thing. But that's totally inadequate because it's very easy to make assertions, especially if you're Irish, without justifying them. And I would rather justify them. So that's the best I can do.